All right, everybody. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be around the world. I think this is our second attempt at connecting today, but I think everything is connected and up and running. That's the beauty of a live broadcast. You never quite know what's going to happen, but we're back and ready to go. So, Janice, can you hear me okay? I can, and uh, I'm very excited to go live today. Yes, and well, and here you are. You are live. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there we are. Yeah. And people. People are jumping on, so we will, sorry about that, everybody, for the uh, the little bit of a glitch, but you're nice and clear, I'm nice and clear, no one's mm -hmm. pixelated, so there we go. So you guys do remember to give us those thumbs up and likes and shares on this broadcast because it always, always helps to have your support out there in live video broadcast land. Um, okay, well, Janice, today we are doing. Whiskey. I know. I, I want to wear it. Tales. I want to wear it kind of on my head as I do always. But yes, we've called it Folk Tales. So this was a piece that was a little bit of a collaboration between you and I. Mm -hmm. And let me get it here in the in the center and then I'm actually gonna put this up. Let me get my glasses on so we can see, but happy St. Patrick's Day to you, JP. And happy to you, Katie, and everyone out there. Don't you have a bit of Irish in you? I probably do somewhere way back in the day, but you know, I think that Sicilian uh, trumps it a little bit, but if you have a little bit of Irish, I think you're good to go. I'm wearing a bit of the green today and uh you know it's a it's a good uh, a good day to to celebrate the wearing of the green for sure mm -hmm. well let me add this into the mix and i'm going to solo this out and oh, you can wow. see i've got a mess on my desk here today already that we're going to talk about but i also wanted to um welcome everybody who's watching us on all of our different platforms um we've got people watching us from our beadshop.com uh facebook page from the great bead extravaganza facebook page from our create uh our, our bead table group here for bead shop as well as over on youtube so welcome to everybody it's great to have everybody here um thank you so much for joining all of us so um we've had a lot of first time viewers lately jp which is great i know i've noticed i've noticed let me just turn my messages off i left it on sure so that i could get the link but now we don't need <laughs> any of that pinging <laughs> That's right. No pinging. No pinging. You never know. Well, I wanted to let's let's tell everybody uh, or I'll tell you guys a little bit about the background of this piece. OK, and then um, we'll talk a little bit about how you created it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about using your string material and some different clasps and stuff that we've got mm -hmm. going on um, mm -hmm. here today. So. Let me take a bracing cup of coffee or drink of coffee here. So this was uh, back, I don't know, a few months ago, weeks ago, days ago, whatever it was, uh, that we did that folk tales bead embroidery project that I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was kind of the secondary piece that came out of it, this piece here that's on Ultra Suede. And so uh, this had the bead embroidery techniques, it has the Pico edging, and if you look on the back, it has a little bit of a, um, I don't know, kind of a decoration there on the yeah. back, embellishment there on the back. And then we decided, then I was like, I don't know what to do with this. So we thought we would do one of our famous uh, collaboration broadcasts. Yep. And I sent this over to you with some of the beads that I had used. And so you jumped in. Mm -hmm. and created uh, this piece that we see in front of us. So do you want to talk a little bit about this and what your inspiration behind it was, JP, and I'll kind of point out the features? I would be happy to. I think that when it uh, arrived first in the mail, Kate, 
it uh, with the extra supplies that you had used. I looked at it and I said, how am I going to attach this? Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of reached back into the old bead shop uh, skill set and I said, wait a second, I can string across the little shadows across the top mm -hmm. and put, um, put the saw flex or stringing wire, whatever you decide to use, even thread. I put it through, the two through, um, and mm -hmm. it just seemed like I held, a lot of the, t the, the designing was holding it up on me to make sure it looked right because on its mm -hmm. own, it looks great. I, it looks sort of a little bit like a bookmark, a little bit like a, 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 a drape pull. It looks like a great embellishment for a pillow. Um, but I, I was trying to conceptualize it as a pendant. And that's when I said, it's going to need some um, bookmarks around it. It's going to mm -hmm. need something to really set it off and give it more um, presence. And that's when um, I decided it wasn't like reaching very far back, but I wanted to put chain around it, um, mm -hmm. which really just makes the shield look more special and gives it right. more value or uh, presence, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I strung the, um, the two uh, uh, strands of Softlex through a new bead that you didn't use, which was the six millimeter metallic mix. That's um, this one here. And then yeah. the, the, the Softlex that you used, Janice, and pardon me for interrupting, but did you, you, you use the fine here? I used the fine and I actually the point used- The 0.014? Mm -hmm. I did use two colors. I was mm -hmm. I didn't have enough of copper I didn't have any bronze I didn't have enough of the, the gray the clear mm -hmm. so it's a combination of I believe copper and uh, clear is through there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at that, and you can kind of see it yeah and we can kind of see it here but the thing about the soft flex that I like that you've used this for is that you did identify these little shadows like we talk about these little mm -hmm. shadows have such a large hole that it's very mm -hmm. easy then to use the top of this pico as your bail mm -hmm. when i had designed this piece i thought that you know and i sent one of those those crescent uh clasps crescent crimps along with it thinking that you might want to add that and just to hang it right there. but this integrates, I think, into the bale very well. And since the the shadows here are metal, the soft flex is a great choice for that because it will really hold up to that, um, you know, to that string material and that bead are perfectly mm -hmm. matched. So you have a double strand going through mm -hmm. here, right? And as mm -hmm. say, you added that six millimeter that was here. Mm -hmm. Right. And... Um this is just something that, uh, you know, it's funny, Kate, when I string something, it really doesn't matter what I string. It always looks like something I would string. <laughs> I just, mm -hmm. it's hard to uh, express that, but I always like things that um, I don't do it consciously, but I like putting little things in. I like putting uh, spacers between beads. Mm -hmm. uh, I like mirroring shape. So right those, here. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I like. Um, and so it just became a logical next step was to use those lovely seed beads that you used. Uh, mm -hmm. That lavender, uh, I have it right here on the oh, edge. Oh, I have them of, right here too. I've got them here. It's the 11-649. Um, the it's the dyed violet silver lined alabaster. Yes, yes. And I, I I just love the way it counteracts the the green of the ultra suede of the topiary. Mm -hmm. It's just it it gives it a lightness. It takes it out of being autumn, like mm -hmm. an autumn necklace, and makes it very spring, very refreshing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just did an even amount of seed beads and then brought them back through a, a shadow and then uh, the spacer bead 
I think it's the he, she. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's the, the she. it's the actually, it's the OB oh, that's the, the paradigm. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Which I don't think we all use enough as spacer beads. Yeah, I agree. I really like, and that's why I really like using these because I use them as embellishments on the front right. here. But I use them a lot as a spacer. And like mm -hmm. you were mentioning, Janice, I think, you know, when you're looking in your treasure trove of beads, and again, you do a lot of this stringing with A, what I send you, and B, what you might happen to have sitting at home in your bead box. Mm -hmm. So having a small treasure trove is what I like to say, is having you know, some of those small beads, those spacers, mm -hmm. things like Ishi, but also things like these O beads or two millimeter beads mm -hmm. or um, or three millimeter beads, you know, things that are kind of small um, and, you know, easy, easy to work with and fill in those spaces. Like here with this 11 knot, using that 11 knot on a doubled strand is great because the visual weight of this piece like this, um, these 11 knots, you know, balance with these six millimeters here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now you had a minute ago, you had a sample that had several strands of seed beads that made it look like a, a, a beaded bead. Do you mm -hmm. get, now if someone had wanted to, they could have added more than two strands. Mm -hmm. um, they could have gone three strands and got more bulk, um, mm -hmm. maybe even four strands together, a random pattern or a, absolutely the same, and it would have made it bulge more, mm -hmm. uh, made it a plump design element. And I'm pretty sure you could get at least two more strands through there. Yeah, you can see here, if I kind of pull this back, you can kind of see the opening in mm -hmm. that shadow bead. So mm -hmm. there's plenty of room um, yeah. for those strands to go through. And then with that, this six millimeter, you can see as well, if I pull it there, I'm sure we could get at least one strand, as you say, maybe mm -hmm. two. And mm -hmm. that's what you can you know experiment with you could also do this with soft touch the point zero mm -hmm. one zero you could jump right. down um, mm -hmm. um a size for that and what i like about this is you've also echoed the shape of kind of this little shield pendant here that i made by using these um what we call them the bali flag um, pendant here. So that shape, whether consciously or unconsciously used, was repeated here and here um, mm -hmm. in the design as well, which looks right. great. Right, right. I, I I just had those in my, uh, like we say, our bead, my bead collection. Mm -hmm. I have not used them in anything. And it was like, I need something that is triangular. I need something that repeats um, mm -hmm. the that intentional uh, um, the shape yeah, really because you also use that in the dragon scales. I was just going to say that. I have the dragon scales here, and again yeah. that same shape. So you could use the dragon scales in the stringing. Um, you could. I think dragon scales are another kind of underused uh, shape because they are such a. Um, it's like a graphic shape, right? It, it's mm -hmm. it's a very mm -hmm. bold shape of the bead. So when you use it, you get a lot of negative space coming mm -hmm. around the around the mm -hmm. shape. So, but you know, experiment with how they fall into your design, and I think you'll be um, pleasantly surprised for sure. Could we uh, uh, take just a minute, Kate, and mm -hmm. share with us how you uh, decided on this shape for the? your center pendant which you're calling a shield what yeah. is there a history i know you use this a lot in your own work um, um yeah i don't know i think that you know a lot of times when we're doing these broadcasts and i think that i did this on a free tip friday to kind of reiterate how to, the second part of how to do this pico so from necessity i needed something that was small right mm -hmm. so that i could complete 
And it was easy to cut out. So when I make mm -hmm. my templates, I use a piece of paper to make the template of this. So I just fold the piece of paper in half and cut this simple shield shape. So mm -hmm. it's easy. Um, it was easy to beat around. It didn't have a lot of complicated curves. It was something that I could create really quickly. And I think it gives a nice kind of background to, um, you know, to putting a simple design on there. Because if you're going to use a lot of beads on your bead embroidery shape, maybe having something that's a little more complex in shape in the background makes it a little, um, makes it, it might make it look a little busy looking, right? So I wanted kind of a simple background. Um, so I think it looks nice. And the, the green uh, is the same green that we used in the folk tales um, mm -hmm. bracelet. Mm -hmm. Well, what I really like about this shape is that it's not only feminine, but it's also very strong. Mm -hmm. And I, it's not one that's used a lot in um, uh, in jewelry. We see it uh, fairly a lot in, you know, African tribal um, pendants, mm -hmm. but it's it's uh, it's not used a lot nowadays. And I think it's just a beautiful uh, shape that resonates with the times. You know, it's just yeah, um, yeah. Make no, a great and, and pin I, too. Yeah, it would make a great pin. Uh, definitely a great pin. And I think that these kind of, you know, these are called the Bali flag, and the Bali bead is a traditional African brass bead that comes from um, West Africa. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the books, and I think that maybe uh, consciously or subconsciously, um, but one of the books that is in my jewelry stash is one that I know that you have as well, Janice. It's called Africa Adorned. Um, right. And it has been, it's also uh, when I watched, uh, I think I told you this, when I was watching Stacey Abrams on TV and she had her pile of books behind her, Africa Adorned yes. was one of her, the yes. books in the pile. Yes. And I was like, all right then. We're in good company. But um, I think that the shape, and and I think this brings us to a point about talking about design here, is that um, not only do the beads give you a shape, and I'm going to pull this down so you guys can see this, but not only do the beads like this two strand or here or this single strand here, you're not only looking at the shape that the bead creates, but the bead also creates a negative space shape around it, right? So when you put in elements like this pointed, what we call the Bali flag, or this pointed shield pendant, or the way that you, you know, draped this, this chain, right? Um, it all kind of echoes together. So you're not only thinking about what I call maybe quote unquote, the positive space or the space that the bead takes up. But you're looking at the negative space of design. If you think about Calder and you think about the Alexander Calder and his mm -hmm. jewelry, you know, his wire mm -hmm. jewelry, um, that is a great use of negative space in his wire jewelry as well. So in his mobiles and jewelry. Um, so yeah, so thank you for noticing that. I think that's probably a good way to, a, a good breakdown of this, the way we think about this design. Now, you were mentioning length. Andrea and I have had this conversation. We had this conversation actually yesterday and we had it again this morning. Um, and we're talking about creating some content around um, around length, around how to mm -hmm. figure out the right length and stuff like that of a piece. So you said one of the things that you did with this, and I'm going to actually change the camera angle so you can see me. I'm going to take my scarf off on to scarf off actually so you guys can see how this lays um, and we can talk a little bit about it. But you said that you constantly kind of put it on and took it off and stuff like that. So do you want to talk a little bit about the the process of measuring for this for this piece? Sure. Uh, it's amazing how great it looks on. It really it just it's light and it's intricate specifically today. I mean, it's Before really it's really get rid of these. Oh, that's better. Thank you. I, I love those earrings, but yes. this is, 
And on you, I would probably make it a wee bit shorter. Yeah, just so, a little bit. And you just, can see on the line, well, it's hard to get it together, but you can see, and that I think is one of the reasons, Janice, why you used the chain on the back. I put it on now. Let me see if I can take it off. It's Here not a, it's, I use the chain I had. I mean, it's not. Yeah. No, and it's, I a, think it's a great chain for it. This is that long view chain. And so you can decide, you know, like you say, if I wanted it a little bit shorter, I would just put it, you know, in right. this longer one. So right. let me, let me put this on. And my, uh, unfortunately, when our Facebook page, which we've gotten back, thank you, yes. Jaya, got, got hacked, we lost that great um, necklace length uh, broadcast that you and I did, but we're going to create oh, some content we'll do it on again. that, so everybody will have that. Look at that but on you, you. You can see how this lays. Now, you can see, you know, the placement of all of these elements are very important to the way that this necklace sits, and you can see when this piece and i'm going to get this as i say with alfred stop getting so up close and personal with me alfie but i'm going to get a little up close and personal with you guys here so you guys can see there we go the piece you can see how when i have this laid out um on the table how it hangs like a v right but this hangs more like a u so it's a little bit softer right um, it's, it's, it's nice. Oh, and Gita says it's on YouTube. So maybe we didn't lose that. Um, that's fantastic. Gita saw that. So we didn't lose that finding the perfect length of a necklace. That is Hi, great Gita. to know. I'm going to let, I'm going to let, um, Drea know about that. That's great. And so again, using the chain and I'll take this off and show yeah. you again, you can decide you know where you want to put this now you were saying janice and i'm going to put this back on the on the main thing let me get not a little close and personal there there we go um you can use once you've decided where your length is going to be right mm -hmm. and so like you said janice you use the chain that you had and this is that swivel uh, the swivel lobster, mm -hmm. which is my hands down favorite, because on something like this, that's multiple strand that where it might lay kind of funny. Um, if it had a clasp that was rigid, this clasp, of course, swivels all the way around. Right. So it's really, I think, it's an terrific. important one to, to have in your yeah. collection. Definitely. So what you could do is you could mark that spot and get a um, I'm going to do that with uh, these guys here. You could mark that spot with a jump ring, mm -hmm. right? And this is our regular good old, good old, what is it? Six millimeter? Yeah, five, 18 gauge. Six millimeter, 18 gauge. And so that will just come in. And again, since this necklace moves around, you know, or this clasp moves, mm -hmm. and what you've got here, let me turn it the right way. Oh, sorry, not an earthquake, just a little mm -hmm. me hitting the camera. See how that comes in, and then this acts as a counterbalance. Now, especially since I've cut all my hair, uh, having the back of the f the back of the necklace be as important and as pretty as the front uh, is very important, I think. And it harkens back to, and some of you are familiar, especially if you are in the Bay Area beading scene back in the late 80s and early 90s, like Janice and I were, it harkens back to the bead artist Helen Beats, who, um, uh, who always counterbalanced her pieces, not only from the front, you know, made big pieces in the front, but counterbalance them from the back. And if you sell your work, this is a great way to make your work universal. So it fits a wide range of bodies, you know, so it's size inclusive, which I love, right? I think that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, you, um, you wanna make sure that the chain you use can go on and off the clasp easily, mm -hmm. uh, that it's not too heavy. And then mm -hmm. uh, design-wise, it's two to three inches in terms of length 
Um, mm -hmm. This necklace, the because it mm -hmm. has the shield, yes, the, because it has the shield, it doesn't really need a counterbalance. Um, right, right. Because it's, it's going to stay heavy. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it will move a little bit side to side. It's, it's, it's not. Uh, a manufactured pendant. It's handmade exclusively by Kate or by you. And so you may find that one side leans is a little heavier because of the pico or whatever, but it's just, um, it's just a lovely thing you made, Kate. And I, I just had the best time embellishing it with a necklace. Oh, well, I'm glad. And you know, What's nice also, and I just noticed this here, because honestly, Janice, I gave this right to Karen when yeah, it came when in, it came in. Uh, was <clears throat> this uh, six millimeter uh, metallic mixed bead. You can see you use the little tiny petal bead caps on those. Right. And, you sent me. Mm -hmm, and I also use those you know, the bead cap there and then that larger bead cap there. So, you know, had I sent you a few more, you could have sprinkled those again into the piece here too, right? I mean, right. so it really is, you know, the world is your oyster with this. The thing that when I saw this was, um, and I want to show, and we really will get to these other um, pieces, but I, I want to show you because I had this idea with these super duos. This piece has a very vintage feel to me. Um, and you guys know that Janice and I both cut our teeth on vintage jewelry pretty much mm -hmm. um, from back in the day. But these super duos have really been having a moment with us here at Bead Shop. And um, I've you, you know, Kate, you sent me, uh -huh. you sent me super duos and you mentioned it when you were talking about designing this live, mm -hmm. you mentioned mm -hmm. super duos then. And so I'm curious to see, you know, they arrived and I said, hey, <laughs> what am I going to use super duos? I did. But now I, was I want to see what you're going to do with them. I want to see yeah. how well, you would do you this. Know me. I'm going to. Yeah, I do. I'm going to I'm, I'm. I'm guessing right now how I'm going to do it. So when I, and Janice, I know this is, sometimes you do this as well, but when we were behind the counter at the physical store, you know, we sold a lot of beads, but we also did a lot of teaching right over the counter. Oh, right? yes. A lot of demoing. And so this was one of the ways that I communicated a lot with customers who would come in. Um, and sometimes I'd even give them this little sample. It's like, okay, now you've bought your beads, take this sample like this so you remember how mm -hmm. we strung it. And so when I am trying to flesh out a design, I often still use that same um, technique, right? Because old habits die hard. So I would come in, and I know you do this too, you string like little bits, you know, little pieces to kind of figure out, well, you know, how does this look, right? So I have these two strands. We also have these cubes, which are a very vintage bead to my eye, right? So see how I've just put on, I'm gonna get a little closer. I don't wanna get too close, but there we go. And I'm gonna string on these two, two of these. One 1.8 millimeter cube. And again, if you don't have these 1.8 millimeter cubes in your treasure chest of beads, right? I don't know what you're waiting for because they are a great staple, a great little spacer. So I want to see that negative space mm. that this super duo now is. I see. In. Now I see. So I'm going to string a little more. I'm going to make that segment a little longer. I put in two. Let me put in four. One, two, three, four. Let me put in a cube. And for the and for everyone watching, those are Miyuki cubes. They're made by they are, uh, they're the, they're made yeah. by the same uh, company in Japan that makes our seed beads. Yeah. So the finishes are very even across the board, 
right? They're very mm -hmm. similar. So if you get the, what color is this? This is the, the 134 FR. If you get it like this in the cube, it'll be the same in the, you know, in the eight odd or the 11 odd or the six odd. I also used some of the Baroque pearls. Again, a super vintage bead, right? Um, the Baroque pearls are also a Japanese bead, beautifully made. And let's see how these come together as a bead that you could pull the two strands under. So see again how I'm using, as you did, Janice, that small bead to kind mm -hmm. of taper, right? Then these both have large holes. So we'll put them under there. And then let's go to, let's repeat this pattern. And I'm just screwing around. I have no idea what I'm doing here. I call it doodling. Yeah, no, exactly. That's exactly right. How would you use the dragon scales? I was I just think thinking about that. Get out of my really? head, Parsons. Okay. So, well, <laughs> I don't know. I was putting I was putting it off as long as I could. But uh, let me see. Let's take a look. And let's actually put that that super duo in. And let's do an intentional repeat. So let's put an 11 on, because that kind of maybe takes up that space. And let's put in another super duo. So maybe visually the weight of just a single super duo might be a little slim. So let's see visually how two look together. So what we've got here, so see what we're getting? We're getting like that single looks great. This double with that one in the middle looks good. And look at that connection right there. Look at that one, how it's flanked great. with those cubes. I think it looks really good. So let me, uh, let me get back to this and I'm gonna taper back down. I think I just need four seed beads per side. One, two, three, and four. And then here, one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> and I'll get this cube. And then we'll look at dragon scales. We're gonna not be afraid. So here these guys go. Okay, so let me open up the dragon scales. And you guys, we really appreciate it. There's so many people out there watching on all of our different platforms. While I'm taking the time to string this, you guys can go ahead, especially if you're watching on our YouTube channel, you can take a moment to hit the like button, the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Um, we would love that because that helps get this bead word out to everyone around who uh, loves good educational bead content. We really, really appreciate all of your shares, your likes, and your um, your support. So while so you're doing is, that, Kate, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna mute myself for a second, go sure. over to YouTube and say okay. hello, and maybe do okay. a couple of links. Gita is also linking over there, just an FYI, so you know that. But let's take a look. I'm going to string this section of three dragon scales there. And then I'm going to do a section of three dragon scales over here. But you know what, what I thought about, right? So let's look at this real quick in my head. I, because when I'm designing this, I try and stay one step ahead of myself in my design head. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but as I'm stringing, I try and strategize what's going to come next. Okay. So that makes sense. Right. So if I put 
three dragon scales in, in exactly the same place as I put these, they might bump up against one another, right? So maybe what I want to do instead is counterbalance those by putting two on the other side. So I'll put on a seed bead. I'll put on a dragon scale. And I could just use like a single dragon scale or whatever, but I think that the visual impact of a cluster of dragon scales, how they look, um, is makes them have all that much more of a visual impact. So see how they counterbalance each other like that, right? And so now I'm going to go back and put the, I'm going to repeat with these cubes, this one. and this one. So now we're here and I'm going to repeat those four on both sides. One, two, three, and four over there. I always think I've cut enough soft flex for this and then I worry mm. about running out. But when I run out, then, then we're done with this little doodle design. And then I'll put in another couple of super duos. And then let's take a look at what we've got. We'll analyze this design. Kate, could you use the little cubes for your Pico? Oh, 100%. Definitely, yeah. They definitely would work for the Pico. Good. Anything, I think, like I use the, um, the little shadows for that mm -hmm. Pico. And as long as the bead can kind of fit through if the Pico is here, as long as you make the space between these two beads that actually touch the edge of the, the fabric, as long as that width is correct, you could use anything, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. If these are yeah. if these 11 knots were too close together, this would sit funny. So you have to kind of stitch those 11 knots in, in the Pico to whatever the width is going to be. You could also use dragon scales for the Pico right along the edge oh, um, oh that you would, would just be fun. yeah you would just make your space a little bit thinner you could use a dragon scale in the between two 11 knots right and you're going to see when we have emily on next week we're going to talk about fringe and seed bead fringe and stuff she's going to bring out her famous jars and talk about some of those edgings and things um, I can't wait. And you'll, I love you'll it when Emily really comes yeah. on. I know, me too. Look, at, I'm being with the tiniest. I, and what's going oh, on? What, do you thread. have any more on the other end? No, I tape this I'm side, so, and you. I'm just like one bead away, <laughs> and then I'm going to put a piece of tape on it. Put some tape on it. There we go. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and close this up and then let's analyze what we've got here. And we're old school here. We like closing our ends with the scotch tape really carefully though, because we don't want any extra sticky all over the place. So let me move these over and let's lay this out. It looks great. Look at that. So you can see here, and and you can kind of take a look and see what you did, what you don't. You know, I, I like these super duos flanked by this color, I think. And you can see I use four here and then two there. Um, I really particularly like this element um, here with the O beads and that mute pearl. I love this double. Um, so all of, you know, any of these would work, but I think that counterbalancing these dragon scales like this, so they don't all bunch up, I think is a pretty effective way of using them. Do you have any thoughts about it looks this? Great. It look, <clears throat> I was actually surprised how good the drag, oh, sorry, how good the dragon scales, um, uh, look and the mm -hmm. pattern of five. I think it's, mm -hmm. um, so the necklace could have been done really with the leftover beads you had 
um, I like it with the metallic mix, the fire polish. Oh, the, yeah, the metallic but mix, I, I, hand, hands down. I think it's great. But I also think that you so could, like, look at it. Look how interesting yeah. that is. And you could uh, translate this section mm -hmm. now into a strung, like a strung bracelet or a multi-strand piece, which kind mm -hmm. of brings me to talking about some, some, you know, different ways of connecting this. So, you know, kind of maybe taking this portion out of the mix for a moment. And, you know, if you were creating a, a suite of, uh, you know, of, of pieces, an, an earring, mm -hmm. a bracelet and a necklace, something like this using, uh, you know, multiple strands here, mm -hmm. you could use something like either this, and I wanted to show because sometimes people get confused with the regular Clio clasp that we carry mm -hmm. and the vertical Clio clasp that we carry here. And essentially they're the same tube clasp, right? But but when we talk about vertical, we talk about how the, the loops are different, are, you know, are seated differently. Right. Or the regular Clio, the loops are facing. And on the vertical Clio, the loops, you see the side of the loop um, up at the side. And something like this, for those of you who are seed bead weavers or bead weavers, something like this, you can weave these loops right into your design, right into your pattern. Something like this, the Clio that has the, the loops that are facing us, we've used that in a lot of different designs. And I have one here, and we can talk about how we do it with multiple strands. So here, if we look, do I have a triangle? I need <laughs> something. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move this stuff over to get it out. So it's not so visual. So if you're just drawing. making a multi-strand bracelet like that one, you could use either class, couldn't you, Kate? Yeah, it you definitely could. Mm -mm. It really wouldn't. You, you can see here right. how I used this one that was facing, probably because it was just the one that I had to hand. Um, right. And this was multiple strands. So you can see that this one has, um, where's my little pointer? I use the the wire guards here, and then I I used these holes are nice and large, as are these, right? So you can see how you can add two strands or a single strand. Now on Drea's, I brought Drea's pieces, and you guys might remember this from when we did Drea's convertible necklaces. And let me, this would be a great way to make a piece. Let's say that you had this piece as your, and look at how this all kind of goes together in a color story editorially. Let's say that you made this piece, right? And this was a single. And then maybe you made some other longer strands that you wanted to wear with it. You could create like these convertible pieces like we did with Drea's right? So that you could wear this piece alone, or you could layer it and have this be kind of the, the showcase up at the top. And then you could create some longer strands. You could do even just like single long strands of fun things like this, um, you know, this kind of stringing that might enhance it further. Maybe you could add a long piece of chain that would enhance it further. So you can kind of decide if you want to wear it simple like this or um, go, go full glam, I guess, with multiple strands, right? Mm -hmm. So that would also work. And remember with Tria's, and you can watch this convertible necklace one that we did, that the one side of this clasp has the um, little lobsters connected with the oval jump ring. And then the other side just has the oval jump rings connected so that the, the necklace can be worn on its own if you take it off. It has a lobster claw on one side and a loop on the other. 
if that makes sense, right? right. So you Clever. don't, so you don't have, so you wouldn't put two rings on this side or two lobster claws. You put a ring on one and a lobster claw on the other, and then you could wear anything, right? You're, you're styling, you've got your jewelry wardrobe ready to go. So something like that would also be fun because you've got a big bunch of beads. I mean, you can see, Janice, we still have a bunch of yeah. beads left over from yeah. this project, right? So if you're creating kind of a, a, a suite of, of necklaces that you might wear or, or, or a necklace bracelet kind of combo. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show clasp wise, I'm gonna move that little precious nugget away for a second is I wanted to show multiple strands and this is something we did with Softlex a while back putting in multiple strands into um, a toggle and I've got the toggle right here okay and you can see that toggle clasp what we've done I want to separate it so you can kind of see it you can um, come in and um, crimp like multiple strands together. So see how I've got two strands here under one single crimp tube, two strands here again under one single crimp tube, and then the single strand here. So this was, this was our paver necklace or something from a while back, but it's a float, which is very pretty, very effective. But you can just use that loop. This is the very same clasp, our plain and simple toggle. But you can see that loop has such a large hole that you can get all of these in there. You could put a larger jump ring on and add everything to the jump ring as well if you wanted to do that. You just need to make sure that when these two clasps come together that there's room for all of this to come through the toggle loop, okay, or else it won't. Or else it won't work. Do you um, know but what, I wanted to... uh, Oh, sorry, Kate. You know what keeps no, the toggle bar from going through the circle? <clears throat> yeah, it's if, a large if, bead right at the end. If you have a right, big exactly. bead, right, then the right toggle there. can't turn sideways. Mm -hmm. Right. So a toggle has to kind of turn, bend like a little yeah. elbow, like yeah. this right and the the loop needs to go on so if you had a large hole or large hole beads this just wouldn't go to be able to clear that bar of the toggle but since this is just soft flex and crimp tubes it um it clears it just fine right does that make sense right so yeah, i only learned like that, that the hard way <laughs> right well we've all learned that right we've all learned that the hard way for sure yeah. right so um so those are i also have this little tiny what we call the cuties or cuties clasp which is small but it also will accommodate the hole on that you can see the hole on this is not that much smaller the interior diameter of that clasp so you could clasp probably or crimp probably three strands along this but again you could if you wanted that loop to be larger you would just come in you would get your jump ring and again this is the six millimeter 18 gauge you want to make sure that it's a gauge of jump ring that is heavy enough that won't pull out and then this just goes right on and closes up now since you are crimping onto this, I would definitely use crimp cover or um, wire guards on this because even though I've closed this jump ring very, very well, it's very closed there, the wire guard will keep that soft flex from pulling out um, of the loop. And we've got some new jump rings that are making their debut soon that might even be a better choice in this round ring. We've got some oval jump rings that will be great for this because the oval, the opening is on the side. So that opening of an oval jump ring usually stays on the side. So your strands don't ever really come in contact with where the ring is open, if that makes sense. I like to also wire wrap a bead unit. Yeah, like this bead. one is here. Yeah, yeah so that- Like um, you could use that, right? You could wire wrap that connection yeah. there. 
And so, so instead of having a it, little bit away, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it would look just like that. That would work out mm -hmm. really, really well. And I did see that someone did ask and someone answered it in the chat, but I wanted to make sure on this piece. Yeah, both the, the little shadows here are what created the bail for this. So Janice put in two strands of the 0 0.014 soft flex through. And as we discussed earlier, you could probably get several, at least maybe two two more strands through that if if you wanted to. But you would just have to check your bead holes there. And the other okay. thing we didn't mm -hmm. talk about, Kate, I forgot to mm -hmm. mention, is I added the chain um, with a jump ring on each side. Yeah, let's take the, a look at that closure maybe just a little bit. No, no, I mean down at the down at the pen yeah down here right let's so that it would hang up. correctly it would yeah it wouldn't if i use the ring on the chain the chain might have stood out horizontally and then dropped but by right. adding so we, the jump ring it right. drapes it it move it it makes it have some movement here and that's and it what we're clears the beads for. yeah it clears exactly. the beads better mm -hmm. yeah so you used our small three millimeter round jump ring and just really yeah. um, closed it up nicely. And this little lentil chain, like let's say that this little lentil chain had two loops in between the lentils, right? Mm -hmm. It just has a single loop. Those two loops would have helped this lentil clear it. But since yes. it only had a single one, you had to add a ring so there right. was movement there and that's really right. important when you're adding an embellishment or if you're closing a piece you know closing at the end you need to have that room that elbow that moves freely because if this were stiff number one it wouldn't drape correctly number two it would uh break eventually this would mm -hmm. be a, a weak point in the design um, I also wanted to show, and this is a, a tassel, but you'll get the idea. Let's say that you wanted to make something like this that was multiple strand, and you wanted all of those strands to come into a closure, right? So you could use, this is our capped off. We have it in six millimeter and I think eight millimeter. We also have some different cones. This I happen to use as the top of a tassel because as you know, I love tassels, but you would pull what's underneath that and you can go back and find that episode, watch that episode. I'm sure Gita is frantically uh, <laughs> searching for that one, but it's essentially pretty easy to do. What you do here is you have all of your, you have a wire wrap and you can see that wire is right up here at the top. So I'd have a wire that I'd just bring around and I'd wire wrapped closed, right? And this loop wouldn't be too large, right? But again, not too small. And let's see if you were stringing on your soft flex. Each of your soft flex strands comes in and then it's crimped onto the end of that wire wrapped loop. You could even crimp two strands through one crimp tube and loop them both through and crimp them these beads here on the ends of your strands would be small two millimeter 11 knot something that's small then that cap will drop down over the top, okay? And then you would just have your strands come, okay? And string like that. But these would taper to, to bigger strands or to bigger beads, if that makes sense. So that's uh, kind of an easy way to pull all of those strands together underneath and then that would just connect to a single strand clasp. I love your drawings. <laughs> my little my little scratch drawings here. <laughs> but uh, so I hope that gives you some good ideas, everybody, about how 
to kind of multi-strand this sucker or to kind of make something like this uh, your very own. I'm going to lay this all out for some last looks so you guys can take a look and ask any of your questions that you might have for the end of the broadcast. Oh, and Janice, we didn't also, we didn't mention, but you use that very bottom Pico right there right. to do a wire wrap bri briolette, right? And since this right. Pico was done with this uh, metal bead, it's really um, sturdy. So you can get, you actually used again, another one of those small three millimeter jump rings, or again, for movement purposes, see how this has uh -huh. a lot of nice movement, or you could also just wire wrap in there and just make sure that you have a loop that's large enough. Yeah, if the loop isn't large enough, um, because I tried it that way first, the, um, the circle of the eye on the briolette wrap will get stuck on right. one of the sides of mm -hmm. the, of the um, shadow. And so by using that jump ring there, I was able to give it like a really free rein yeah. on t uh, in terms of movement. Yeah, and that I think is what makes this, if it didn't have that movement, it would just kind of look like an afterthought a little bit, right? Really, yeah. But since it has that movement in it, um, it integrates in the design very, very well. Right. Well, I think I've got all the clasps out that we've used. I can't find that little cuties clasp anywhere, but I'll find it when I clean up. Um, so again, I think that we've talked about, you know, how to um, how we measured this, how we need to frequently try it on for something like this that has the chain um, to make sure that it sits correctly. We talked about how we would use chain here on the end. And you, Janice, we didn't really get a close look at that, but you can see what you did here on the very end was you just, you didn't use a wire guard because two strands didn't fit through the wire guard and you right. just looped it around the chain back through and then you covered that crimp with a crimp cover there. So that's Correct. how that's closed. Yeah. Correct. So pretty simple to, uh, to close that up. And then, of course, we talked about using some multiple strands uh, to create some different looks um, for the actual um, strands of the piece. And we talked about some different clasps, some variations that you can use. And, of course, don't forget Drea's very clever um, convertible necklace idea, which is over here or you can put in multiple strands in these um, uh, in those Clio clasps that we have, which are very, very nice, I think. But it was a fun collaboration, Janice. I'm glad that you enjoyed yeah. stringing it. Yeah, really me too. Good. Don't we have don't we have one coming up with Karen and Drea? Are they going to do one? Uh, I don't I know. I don't know if chatting. They if they finalized it, but they were definitely okay. talking about it. So yeah, that would be that would be really fun to see love to see to a see collab it. there. I'd love to see yeah. it. Yeah. Well, let me uh, let me remove this and put us here. Remove my solo layout. There we are. Um, we're going to have Emily uh, next week with us, which I'm very excited about to have her. Um, join us for some seed bead work, which is going to be great. And then on Friday, I have uh, a fun book that I'm going to be sharing with you guys um, and a knot from that book. I know that you guys really like our Friday broadcasts that have a new knot for your knotting arsenal. Um, someone asked real quick the length of this necklace. Janice, is this about 20 inches, do you think? Well, it depends. I with the extender, it's probably 20 inches, but 20, I wear yeah. like a 16, mm -hmm. 16, mm -hmm. 17. So mm -hmm. you just have to find, you know, hold something up. If uh, just the quick and dirty to find the right length of a short necklace, hold one, a pin up, hold a centerpiece, hold a, a disc up, move it up and down and look at your face in the mirror and decide where it looks best on you. 
And then mm -hmm. you just measure from there to the back, back around, and that's your necklace length. And that's your length, yeah. And yeah. it really, and having this chain is very nice because then you can also adjust it for your length. Mm -hmm. um, we also have coming up this weekend, we've got the great bead extravaganza. Some of you have I already can't wait. purchased. You've purchased your prairie kit, that, the one that's called uh, Foundry. We have a new kit that's going to be dropping that Saturday morning called Quarry. And I will be on, it's this Saturday, uh, March 20th. It'll be mm -hmm. at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And Drea will have uh, the links for it, but we'll be on all of our social. We'll be on the Great Beat Extravaganza pages, but we'll be on our pages as well. So mm -hmm. you will get a reminder. Um, I'm going to schedule actually that broadcast soon so you guys can see it. But it's going to be really fun. Um, I have an hour to share with you one of our kind of uh, signature projects, which is our Prairie Project. We're going to talk about um, flat knotting. Um, and I think you guys will really love the kit. So if you've already bought yours, uh, the kits are already out the door. They're, they're, they're on their way to you. Um, but you may want this new colorway. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And I wanted to also jump in real quick. Um, Drea, you know, of course, does such a great job on all of our newsletters. So she put in something special in the newsletter and she knows me so well, right? So she texted me yesterday and said, oh, Kate, we have to have a St. Patrick's Day uh, promo. I said, you're right, Drea, we're right. So she said, it's only going to be for the newsletter. And I said, perfect, only for the newsletter. But if you'll see, uh, so it's only today on the, the 17th of March, 2021, if you're watching live, it expires tonight at midnight Pacific time. But if you'll see what her copy says, it says, this sale is only to be found in our newsletter. We won't share it on social media or the homepage. So shh, it's just for you guys. And then she said, okay, and Kate might share it on the live too. <laughs> so she gave me an out. So I am sharing it on our live broadcast. So if you're watching today and you do want to do some shopping to add to your bead stash, you use the coupon code LUCKY17 at checkout and it will knock 17% off of your order with no minimum. And I also wanted to mention, you guys, you can find all of, there we go, all of the information on the project and the products from this broadcast right on beadshop.com. You can sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. And of course, one more screen here. There we are. You can follow us at beadshop.com on our Instagram, uh, our bead table Facebook group called the bead table. We'd love to have you join us over there. We're uh, almost 6,000 beaders strong from all over the world. Wow. And there's a lot of great um, uh, conviviality that goes on over there. And of course, you can like and subscribe us. Take that time now if you're watching us on YouTube to like and subscribe to our beadshop.com YouTube channel. Um, we're in the process of getting our uh, former um, page uh, up and running Yay! again our Facebook page. So Drea did a great job doing that. So I will add that to our social as soon as we are 100% back up and running. So that's it. So Janice, thanks so much for joining me today. It was a great project. I hope Thank that you, you um, I hope that you enjoyed making this. And I think that everybody uh, enjoyed watching this. So I, I will so. be back. I'll be back on Friday with a knot, a new knot for your beating arsenal. And everyone have a, a great uh, afternoon and week. And I will see you on Friday, everybody. Thanks, Janice. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, Kate. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.